Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure diorama review. Today, we're going to look at the Toys Nest City of Shadows Hellbringer Deluxe Diorama Base. This is basically a rooftop with a large gargoyle. I think this will be very useful in my action figure world building and my Batman action figure collection. I ordered this thing from Big Bad Toy Store and it finally arrived today. So let's check out the packaging. It's a little bit beat up, as you can see. City of Shadows, Hellbringer, Deluxe Base, blank on the other sides, <coughs> useless nonsense up here, and nothing going on down there. Like I said, a little beat up, but I imagine the contents are just fine. And I did end up getting two of these things, because my action figure city needs more rooftops and gargoyles, more dioramas to enhance it, and inside of that larger box were two smaller boxes. All right, now that this diorama out of the package, here it is with all the accessories laid out. It comes with the rooftop base, two side pieces for the rooftop, a large gargoyle, a stand for the large gargoyle, some removal wings and a bell for the gargoyle, and then three smaller baby gargoyles for the sides. In this video, we're going to put this rooftop diorama together. We're going to show the assembly, all the different features, and then we'll compare it with a bunch of action figures from different various companies, so you can see which action figure lines it fits in, both scale and style-wise. So, let's go ahead and start putting it together. Now, before we start putting the actual diorama together, it came with this little card here, City of Shadows, Hellbringer. It's got a little sort of wax seal there. This is number 58 out of 200. Apparently they only made 200 of these things. It's pretty interesting. At Toy Nests. Backside, a few different barcodes, their Instagram. I have no idea what the rest of those things are. Kind of interesting. And the fact that I got two of these things. We have number 58 and number 66. I wonder who got number one. So we'll start off with the base of the diorama here. It's a square shaped sort of rooftop base. You can see on the top, it's got two squares that are sort of blank, and then two that have these almost sort of magic symbols on them. Sides here are blank. You can see that it looks like there are some magnets inside of here. Now one cool feature here, it's like a big storage box. Open it up, you can put all the pieces inside. Nifty little feature. Next, we're going to want to attach these two side pieces to the rooftop base. This makes make it seem like the top of a sort of older style building. Now they're gonna have magnets that are attached to the square rooftop base and they have magnets on the other side that will attach the little baby gargoyles to them. Here's our rooftop base as it came, plain, nothing attached. And here it is with the side pieces attached, already looking considerably different. Now to attach the actual gargoyle. Gargoyle Hill looks pretty good. It's got the demonic look to him, pointed ears, sharp teeth, He's going to be holding a bell. He's got a bunch of skulls around the base here. Sculpting is top notch. Fantastic. Got some magnets in the back for his wings. Flat surface at the bottom. Here's a gargoyle with the wings attached. Ready to be put on display. So it's got this little base that's going to either sit in front or on top of the rooftop. But in the meantime, here's the gargoyle on top of this base. And like I said before, you can put this gargoyle either on top of the diorama rooftop base or in front of it. Here's a gargoyle in front of the rooftop base. It's got a little corner piece here and it fits in just perfect. Now that's if you want to have it in front. Personally, I think it looks better on top. But there are numerous different options. Now, if you don't want to put them in front and you want to put it on top like I plan to do, Take him, get him out of the way, and it also comes with this small little piece here, and that'll finish off the corner of the rooftop in case you're not planning to put the gargoyle there. Like I said, a couple of different options there. You can also have the gargoyle on the front in the corner there, but I think it looks better in the back. And here it is in the back, giving you a little bit more surface area to display your figures on. Or you could display them as two separate pieces entirely. Have the rooftop by itself with your figures on it and have the gargoyle somewhere totally different. Very versatile, a lot of different display options here. 
There's also a bell that the gargoyle is supposed to be holding. We have the bell here at the bottom. It's got a little bat hanging upside down from inside the bell. Nice little feature. Now I'm not really feeling the bell for the gargoyle to hold, but the way the gargoyle was designed, if you don't actually have him holding the bell, he's got this hand holding this weird thing down below, which looks kind of dumb. So you kind of have to use the bell. Here's the gargoyle holding that bell. This thing is almost fully put together at this point. And the last piece to attach are these little baby gargoyles. There are six of them. Two of each of three different kinds. Each one of these things is a little magnet on the back. It's going to attach to the outside of the building wall. Here's a rooftop diorama without the baby gargoyles. Then, with the baby gargoyles attached, add in the large gargoyle. And now your city of shadows, Hellbringer rooftop diorama base, is complete. And here are both of these Hellbringer diorama bases that I have next to each other. Now seeing the two of them together, I think I could connect them. So let's try that out. Here are the two rooftop dioramas put together, meaning for a larger rooftop. We've got two corners here. See them like this makes me wish I'd ordered four of these things. You can have them with the gargoyles or without. Personally, I think I'm probably going to display these things without the gargoyles and utilize them separately in my action figure city. Either way, makes it some really nice cityscape dioramas. Should be great for my Gotham City Batman collection. Here's a look at them from the top, so you have a good idea of how much rooftop surface you have to play with. And a closer look at some of the detail in this diorama. The sculpting detail is fantastic. Look at this thing. It looks like the side of a building. It's not perfect. There's some weathering. It's worn. Paint job looks good. Gargoyles look even better. Here's a closer look at the top. The rooftop surface looks great. Looks like actual stone. Looks like a building that's been around for a while. Well done. Now they've taken a pretty good look at the diorama and the assembly. Now let's check out the measurements. From bottom to the tallest point, about four inches tall. And then from one side to the other, about eight and a half inches. And that's gonna be on all four sides. It's a perfect square. Of course, when you have the gargoyle on top, it's gonna make it a lot taller. If you have the gargoyle on top, from bottom to the top, just under 12 inches tall. And if you have the gargoyle on the front, the tallest point's gonna be about nine and a half inches tall. Now let's check out the action features of this thing. And there are not a lot of action features. It simply exists. You can put your fingers on top of it, etc. But it has a few different looks. Here's one look here, rooftop. It's got the extra corner piece here. You can have the gargoyle attached to the front or sitting on top in the back. And of course, if you got more than one of these things, you can put them together, giving you a much larger rooftop for display or play. Whether it was intended to be this way or not, it's a very cool feature. Putting two of these together takes it to a whole nother level. Two of these like this can make a pretty nice rooftop. Two of the four corners, and hell, if you had four of them, you could make a really cool rooftop. And here are the two dioramas put together, making a large rooftop with both the cargoyles in the back. Looks very cool. Here's the diorama on a rooftop in my action figure city. This is on top of an extreme sets building and actually fits perfect on top there. If I had gotten four of these things, it is absolute perfection. Match made in heaven on top of this extreme sets building in my action figure city. You could put this thing onto a corner on top of one of your bookshelves, would look really good. Here's an image of Batman, Nightwing, and Robin perched on top of a rooftop in Gotham City. And here's Goliath overlooking Manhattan. And here's yet even another potential display option. Not only do you have the rooftop surface, but you can remove the gargoyles and have the extra corners for purposes to put your figures. Here's a rooftop displayed another way, gargoyles on the sides. Batman, Robin, Nightwing. This is probably the best way to display this thing. Looks great. And here they are, with a little bit more of a proper lighting. These gargoyles on the rooftop kind of make me think that something that could be on top of Dracula's castle. Here's a look at the Mezco 1999 Keaton Batman on an old school rooftop with some exaggerated gargoyles on the corners. And here's Spawn crouch on top of that rooftop. Now let's check this diorama out. Next to some action figures from different various companies so we can see how it fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know what designs you can use it with. And the truth is, it'll work with anything, probably from 6 inch 
to 8 inch scale and honestly it was advertised as working with either 112 scale or 1 6 scale which is 12 inch tall action figures I think it'd be pretty small for those guys but if you have the two together like this I don't see why it wouldn't work either way these Darabs together actually came out of something way better than I expected look at this very nice here it is with some Jack Specific and DST Diamond Select toys and here it is with some McFarlane toys and DC Direct DC Collectibles figures then with some NECA figures and some Mattel wrestling figures and now some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers and some Mezco 112 collective figures on the diorama here are some Mattel DC Universe classics and multiverse figures and some Mafex Batman figures on the diorama and finally some Hasbro Marvel Legends and some SH Figure Arts Batman figures standing there so overall this is a fantastic diorama honestly the gargoyle is a little bit too large I wish it was toned down some but you could just take the gargoyle off, not even have it there if you want to. Putting the two rooftops together totally changes this diorama from something that's just sort of okay to something that's absolutely awesome. If only I realized I could have got more of them. Either way, it's a very nice display piece to say the least. Sculpt and paint job are fantastic. Now, they don't fully fit in together exactly seamlessly. Some things are a little bit uneven. That corner piece it's not completely flush, and that's annoying. But the larger gargoyle corner pieces are just fine. It doesn't really have any traditional action features. It simply exists for your figures, but it looks great for what it is. I wish it came with a large cardboard background. That would be nice. This little cardboard background I'm using is just far too small to take effective photography and capture the gargoyles. Still, I'll figure something out. It's a really cool piece, though. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure diorama and action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.